All right, so this weekend I was hanging out with my niece and nephew. And at one point, somebody said that my niece, I always get them confused, niece and nephew, but niece is the female version. Although, with the way things are headed, I suppose we won't be allowed to use niece and nephew anymore, <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> well, I'll keep it alive while uh, it's still permissible. My niece, at one point, was referred to by somebody as a princess. She's two years old, doesn't even understand what that means. But my nephew, who is four, heard this and was very displeased. And he said possibly the funniest thing that I've ever heard anyone say (laughs) in response to this. So they referred to my niece as a princess And he just gets this look on his face. You know that look where you know you're going to say something devious? (laughs) And he says, no. Princesses are in movies. Princesses don't live in houses. She is not a princess and never will be. (laughs) I just started dying laughing. Everybody did because... We were all in awe of the commitment that he showed and the logical way that he had thought this through, uh, the great lengths that he had gone to in his mind to disprove the idea that his sister would ever be a princess. Uh, Oh no, that will never happen and here's why. (laughs) And it was just hilarious. And then someone said, well, what if this was a castle? Uh, could she be a princess then? And he just goes, no, this isn't a castle. This is a house. (laughs) And that was that. And I admired that this was the hill that he had chosen to die on. Which really gets you thinking about how so many of us, I want to say all of us, but I'm sure there are people who have transcended this type of thing, but definitely myself included, we hang on to... The type of mentality that my nephew displayed well into adulthood when we should have let go of that type of thing a long time ago. That is, hanging on to an idea no matter what is presented to you. My nephew had it made up in his mind that his sister will never be a princess. No, she's not a princess. And he had all of these reasons why that will never be the case. And it doesn't matter what any of us say to him. He has decided this. And that's what I mean. We grow up, but due to the way that the programming infects our minds, we hang on to that type of attitude as it relates to a lot of things, especially personal relationships you get a certain idea about either yourself or someone else and nobody can tell you differently. Even if you should be listening to the other perspective or a different idea, you just cling to it. You hang on to it. You use all kinds of logical reasoning to justify your position. And in that way you push away every other alternative explanation. This is what makes communication so very difficult with a lot of people. They have all of these ideas that they're clinging to in their mind that are preventing them from seeing a different side. I mean, you can extend this to any idea that you can think of. Recognizing this type of thing is when I had a lot of breakthroughs in personal relationships. And it would be good to talk about that right now because most of you listening to this are probably finding it difficult to exist in the world knowing what you know amongst a lot of people who don't know these things, which makes communication very difficult. And an example from the same weekend and interacting with the same people, at a certain point, the adults were having a conversation and the kids were getting kind of tired and cranky and a little out of control. So my sister decides to put on a show that they watch. And it was this Disney show 
a cartoon that had Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck and all these characters. It was something that I had never seen before. Obviously, this was an updated version of it. But she puts this on and instantly the kids are mesmerized by it. And even them, they said, well, you know, we watch this stuff a lot all the time. We have the songs memorized. They're catchy. They stick in your head. And we know all the words to the dialogue. And even they are kind of sucked into it. Now, obviously, I could have went on a long diatribe immediately after this was put on and start talking about the history of Disney. Start talking about the subliminal messages in Disney programming. Start talking about what the actual organization itself, Disney, does. Lots of news coming out about that right now. People becoming aware, finally, of what Disney is really about. Which doesn't even get into the history of Walt Disney and his ties to the power structure. I could have started right there. And then from that point, I could have went into the television and what this is actually doing to your mind. How it's in training you, the brainwaves in your mind altering your state of being. This is what you're doing to your children every time you turn this on. On and on it goes, right? I could go down the list of things that just putting on one Disney show brings to mind that most people are completely unaware of. But did I do that? No, of course not. I didn't say anything. And this is just a lesson that you learn over time that it's best to remain silent in these type of situations because your personal relationships, especially with family, are more important than any of that. And a lot of entities that allegedly give you the truth kind of promote this idea that you should be yelling from the rooftops about all this. They kind of implant this idea that you need to wake people up. And if there's any advice that I would give to someone who's new to all this, it is just keep your mouth shut <laughs> at all times when you're first getting into all this, because I promise you what you think is true now won't be what you think is true two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. It will change dramatically and you will regret being so vocal about what you think is true now to the people around you, especially your family, friends, people that you know really well. Because especially if you end up promoting some type of disinformation, this can damage your personal relationship for no reason. And there's a lot of that going on here. This glorification of isolation. A lot of these entities promote that idea. Glorifying being alone. Well, no one around me gets it. I might as well just cut out everyone from my life because they don't get it. And I suppose it's a certain rite of passage to have that hermit phase with all of this where you do kind of have to retreat into your own mind and you're not as available from a personal relationship perspective when you first get into all this. But at the same time, family and friends or whatever the case is for you, I know a lot of people have a toxic situation with family or friendships that you shouldn't be in anyway. And maybe some of this is a catalyst for you to realize that. And you have to cut ties with certain people to allow yourself to grow. Sure, there's some of that going on. But at the same time, you have to recognize the importance of the people who actually care about you. Those people are really important to keep in your life. And you should not be so flippantly throwing that type of thing away just because they don't know what you know. Keeping in mind, again, that a lot of what you think you know isn't reality anyway. And you've arrogantly come to believe that. In spite of it not being the actual truth of the situation. So how tragic, right, where you think something is true. It's a half-truth most of the time, right? There's some truth there. It's just you've been taking in information from a distorter, and it's distorted your mind accordingly. But still, it's a tragedy to lose a personal relationship with someone who cares about you greatly and would do anything for you because, for example, they don't know the fact that the Earth is flat. Just to give an example of how this might work out. 
do I know what the shape of this world is? Do I know what it really looks like? Of course, I don't know that. <laughs> but you see my point that neither does the person who thinks that the earth is flat. And yet they're proclaiming that to someone and maybe losing all of these relationships because they don't know the truth about what is going on. Or at least what they perceive, given their current uh, level of awareness, is the truth of what's going on. But getting back to the Disney show that they were watching, it was so funny. After two episodes of it, which was 30 minutes, my sister said, okay, that's enough television for the day. I mean, she is pretty good about it, not letting them watch too much. And it was so interesting the way that the kids reacted, especially my nephew, who is 40 years old. So he's a little older, has a little more ability to communicate and just a more advanced understanding than his sister. It was like somebody flipped a switch in his mind and he immediately started acting out once she churned off the show and tried to get him to do what she wanted him to do next. Getting ready for dinner and all this stuff. And it was really funny. He started saying, bad daddy, bad daddy, <laughs> when he was uh, talking to his dad who was trying to get him to do something. And uh, me, I'm being a terrible uncle. I'm over in the corner cracking up because I thought that was hilarious that he was saying bad daddy. <laughs> and uh, But my sister said, you know, it's so funny. He's so well behaved until I put this show on and then all of a sudden he acts out. I don't know if it's too much TV or if it's just he's getting tired and cranky, maybe a combination of both. But whenever I let him watch too much of this, he kind of reacts this way and starts acting out. And for me, sitting there hearing that, then I go right back to what I was talking about earlier, where it's, well, there's so many things I could tell you about why that might be happening. And in that moment, I do drop a little seed into her mind that could become something in the future, which is just, well, yeah, you have no idea how technology is affecting the mind of a child. We just have no ability to comprehend the full extent of that. So it's good to be mindful of what that could be doing to his state of being. And she just kind of looked at me like, yeah, you know, that's a good point. And I didn't say anything else, right? I didn't say, oh, well, you should see all the subliminal messages that they put in these Disney films. Uh, like when we were growing up, my generation had the VHS versions of all these Disney quote-unquote classics like The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, The Sword in the Stone, or as I went into in a older video, the word in the tone. Arthur pulls the word from the tone, pointing to the ability that the voice has, the secret of it, the secret of language and how you express it in that way. I could have went into all the sexual innuendo that's blatantly put in the old Disney classics without even getting into the subliminal messages that are spliced into all of these programs. But that would be too much for where they are at. So... I just drop that little comment and then move on because the relationship that I have with my sister and her family is very important to me and I want to maintain it. And it's a difficult thing to get into because part of me wants to say that that relationship is more important than any kind of truth, but that wouldn't be an accurate statement because the objective ultimate truth of our situation here and who we are is the most important thing there is. I guess what I'm trying to say then is that carrying 
that truth to the best of your knowledge, abilities, intuition, etc., is the most important thing. Staying true to that is the most important thing. But you can carry that vibration. You can carry that energy. You can carry that infusion of life everywhere you go without needing to push it on those around you, especially those who are very important to you, who you want to maintain a relationship with, because that's what makes life fun. My life that day, hanging out with them was one of the most fun times that I've had in the past year. I laughed so much. Why would I want to deprive myself of that just because they aren't quote unquote awake like I think I am? (laughs) Do you see? Hopefully that makes sense. It's a difficult subject to discuss because your mind wants to lead you into an absolute statement. Going back to what my nephew said about his sister being a princess, this is what I mean. Your mind the version of it that society helps create wants to lead you to an absolute line in the sand statement that you know is true and you will defend against all adversaries. (laughs) It's sort of a battle in that way. That's how we're trained to approach dialogue and information, especially about controversial subjects. It's more like being on a sports team than it is uh, having a discussion with someone because there are sides that everyone takes and then they defend that position no matter what the other person says. This is how we're trained to debate as opposed to communicate. This is why communication and especially listening is so important when you're having a conversation with someone. Breaking out of that programming where everyone is just kind of waiting for the other person to finish whatever they're saying because they already know what they want to say. So what's coming out of the other person's mouth is irrelevant. Just get it over with so I can say what I want to say. (laughs) And that is sort of how communication is taught to us from a young age. And then you pile on top of that what I was discussing earlier where then people are digging in like a trench on a battlefield, hunkering down in there with their particular belief or talking point, whatever it is. And there's nothing you can do to get them out of there. They're staying there and they're going to defend it till their death. (laughs) And this is why no one can talk to each other because we have this situation going on. But if you listen to someone, actually listen to them and give them the space to really explain what's going on with them. Well, that's where you learn about traumas that really open up an understanding about why somebody was the way that they are. And then you, as the other person interacting with this trauma also, well, now you know how to not trigger it. You know how to work around it. You know how to then release that person from the bondage that you might have been holding them in because you got upset every time they did a certain thing. Well, now you understand why they were doing that and it's much easier to release them in that way to where you're not contributing to the problem by piling on more negative energy uh, onto them with your thoughts about them. Communication is everything, both with other people and with life, with reality, the environment around you. Everything is communicating with you. And when you open up to that, it helps you to open up to people in a way that you were totally closed off from before. So I hope you see the distortion in thinking that this awareness that you're acquiring from the internet is truth if it is isolating you from interacting with other people. Sure, you will go through periods where you just need to be alone. And sure, there are people that have isolated themselves from society to go on certain quests like this to develop their awareness. But even they 
don't do it alone for the most part. Even the monks living on mountains are in a community of monks, <laughs> you see. We are tribal in this way as human beings. And it's funny, I was visiting the beach a few weeks ago and I was going for a walk looking at all of the people and it really reminded me of that tribal idea, the way that each tribe, each family, each gathering, we're all huddled around the same area, sitting together, and they all had their own music, depending on their genetic predisposition to sound waves. <laughs> you had some people huddled around listening to country music. You had some people listening to hip-hop, if you can even call that hip-hop at this point. I don't know. <laughs> there was one huge gathering of people. They were listening to... 60s, 70s, classic rock, and flying a big Donald Trump banner. That was amusing to see. <laughs> because, of course, I'm in South Carolina. You'll see that type of thing every now and again. There were very few people like me who were there just by themselves. I was alone. And I was in the extreme minority of people who were just there by themselves. I suppose on the beach in that moment, I was like the guy who was just out on his own living in the wilderness. But as I was having that alone experience, I was thinking to myself, oh, it would be nice to have a tribe with me right now, to have people to hang out with in that way, to experience life with, to share it with someone. Ultimately, that's what everyone is seeking with a personal relationship, is sharing this experience. You'll hear people say this all the time, uh, especially those who've made a lot of money. If they're by themselves, they'll say, well, all of this is great. It makes my life easier. I have more time than a lot of other people, but what's the point of all the work I did to get this if I don't have somebody to share it with? And in this respect, you can see how isolation is sort of a part of their agenda going forward because they know this about us. Sure, they give us the idea of this shared city where it's a community, but ultimately you're being isolated in your own little pod and you don't have a true tribe in the sense that we used to have them. And logically, you connect all these dots and you can see the eventuality of <laughs> test tube babies where we reach this total state of disconnection from how it used to be to this new reality where it seems logical to not even procreate in the way we used to procreate. Let's just create these babies in a lab. But I could talk about how music relates to this all day. It's so fascinating to me, the way sound waves are so effective at manipulating us, if it's done with malice aforethought like they do it through popular music. It's a primal, genetic, tribal wavelength that they are tapping into and controlling and changing your very state of being. A song can flip you emotionally from one state to another, no problem. I really try to limit the music that I listen to, but every now and then when I listen to it, it just can flip me instantaneously. And... I'll hear something that I was listening to a lot at a certain period, as I mentioned before, and instantly I'm transported back to that time. The music is like a time capsule that holds this space in your being that allows you to time travel back to whenever it was that you were listening to this album or this song over and over again. That's why all of this 80s nostalgia programming is so effective, especially for my generation and everyone who lived during that time. They put out something like Stranger Things that has all this 80s nostalgia, and it becomes very popular because people are transported back to a different time when life was completely different, and for many people, way better than it is now. But specifically, somebody could hear this great 80s song and be transported back to wherever it was and whatever it is that they were doing during that period of time. 
they're back there and they start having all these memories come back to them. This happens to me all the time. And that way it's consciousness time travel, which is pretty cool. But I hope you see the tribal aspect of that where as I observed on the beach, all these different genetic histories being moved by certain music and gravitating towards that music because it speaks to them on some level. And then the tribe is all huddled around moving to this music and their state of being is mirroring the music that they're listening to. I actually saw in what was one of the more horrendous sights that I've ever seen, if I'm being honest, I saw a group of girls twerking on the beach. And one of the girls was filming it. Presumably this was uploaded to social media. And there you go, sign of the times, right? I suspect if they weren't listening to what they were listening to, that event would have never taken place. It was the music that got them in that state of mind to think, hey, let's do that. This is why a police officer doesn't pull someone over with classical music playing as its siren, <laughs> right? It just doesn't fit the scenario that they want to see play out in those situations. And it's funny talking about that, right? Because you do have that initial first reaction when you're observing all this, which is, oh, wow, I don't belong here. <laughs> I don't belong in society. Knowing what I know, feeling what I feel, my awareness doesn't belong in this environment. You definitely have that feeling. But if you take that to the extreme, you're missing out on so much. You Finding that balance between being in the world and not of the world is the key to everything, or at least that's what I have experienced. Reality opened up for me, life opened up for me when I balanced being in the world but not of the world. Carrying the truth within me and knowing in my heart that nothing will ever get my heart away from the truth at any given point in time, but simultaneously knowing that I don't have to push that on other people, that I can just enjoy their presence no matter what level of awareness they are at. Even if these are people that I see all the time that I have some type of bloodline tribal tie to me, genetically speaking. Sometimes those are the people that you feel like you need to detach from the most because you see them the most and they know you the best. And they would be the most resistant, ironically enough, to you being a different person because they know the old you so well. And that's why a lot of people have so much trouble when they become more aware dealing with old family, friendship, relationship ties. All of a sudden you're growing apart from your spouse or your partner because they know the old you so well. I mean, this is assuming you've been together for a long time before either one of you have some type of awakening experience. Well, now you're growing apart from them drastically and in rapid fashion. And it's just at that point, well, yeah, you probably do need to end the relationship because you're just so far apart. So I hope you see the nuance to all this. I'm not trying to put a one size fits all interpretation on all this that will apply to everyone. Part of this is you have to use your own intuition to know what relationships you should be hanging on to and what relationships that you should move away from. I guess the idea is just if you're going to move away from a relationship, try to do it in the best way possible. Leave on the best terms possible, as much as that is allowable given the individual circumstances, right? People can do mean stuff to each other that really makes that hard. I get it. Trust me. And as far as getting into the actual information goes, you know, it's kind of become popular to tell everyone, oh, hey, just disconnect, get rid of it all. And that has some nuance too, because it's kind of like in economics, there's the law of diminishing returns, which is this idea that whatever investment you make in something, whether it's capital or energy, the returns from that investment will be diminishing over time. You'll never get out of it what you got out of it in the beginning. 
assuming you invest the same amount of whatever it is, capital or energy consistently over time. So it's kind of like that with this truth stuff on the internet. Initially, you get this huge burst of insight, information, your world's turned upside down. But as you continue to put the same level of energy and capital into it over time, you'll notice the diminishing returns. So sure, at a certain point, everyone's going to come to the realization, if you've been doing this long enough, like, okay, hey, I just can't put the same amount of time and energy and attention into this that I used to because I'm not getting the same thing out of it. Indeed, it's kind of turning me into a jaded person when I put too much attention into it now because I'm just seeing so many lies and this gets me upset. <laughs> uh, that's one part of it. And then, of course, you have the energetic part of it, which is all that internet energy that you're allowing into your life. That has diminishing returns, too. So ultimately, you come to the same conclusion that's along the lines of, well, I just need to turn it off entirely, stop interacting, and go do something else. And I think that's very healthy. In an ideal world, a lot of us would do this, but you shouldn't be promoting that as advice to everyone because there's a lot of people that need to go through a lot of internet research still. <laughs> you know, They need to do that initial investment still. And if they hear a bunch of people saying, oh, it's not worth it, just don't even pay attention. It's like, no, you got to go through it. You actually need to do this so that you develop the abilities to see on your own. That's the only way that you'll be able to do that. So hopefully you see that this is more advice for communication than it is any one subject. I got a lot of pushback on that from the last video I did along the same lines where there were a lot of people who had attached themselves to certain ideas and they thought that I wasn't giving it the treatment it deserved, and I probably wasn't, but the point of the video was how you communicate those ideas, not what the actual truth of whatever the subject was. And that's what I'm getting at here as it relates to your personal relationships, to your interaction with people. You carry the truth, which is honesty, integrity, loyalty. In your heart, you carry that. You are open in the sense of allowing someone to be. You are open in the sense of listening as opposed to convincing or turning to a certain point of view. People in your life that have your back and care for you are important. Don't ruin that relationship, that ability to interact with them over something silly, like what you think the truth of whatever the subject is is. That was an awkward sentence. This is the way. <laughs> I love that line. Uh, this is the way. In the world, but not of the world.